think everybody heard that. Which one has had the most profound effect or did they enjoy the most? Personally, I think the, uh, my most keen friend in amongst the various phenethylamines and alkaloids I've worked with and synthesized has been 2CB. I, I, it's uh, to me a very, very favorable, very warm, very comfortable compound. I don't use any compound more than a couple, three times because I want to keep a rather virgin liver for developing new compounds and getting them in there and find what they do. I'm now in a group of compounds called the flies, which is fascinating. They're the pseudo flies and the semi flies and flies and dragonflies. Uh, they're all compounds with a couple of rings on each of the two ring. On the middle ring, have a couple more rings on them. And uh, they're substituted in various ways. And they are proving to be extremely versatile in amounts of potency and in amounts of activity. And uh, I am finding them very fascinating to explore. And that's what I'm currently working on pretty much all my time. <coughs> I should add that we're beginning to uh, hear from uh, various sources that uh, uh, one of the dragonflies is uh, to be avoided. It's uh, what's what's that? I think the dragonflies are active uh, at less than a, than a milligram in, in potency. Yes. Whereas the flies are active in the, in the uh, 10 or they're, or they're about 10 to 20 milligram levels. I, I was uh, talking to somebody out on the steps uh, just a few minutes ago. I think if, if, you, uh, if, if you turn on Arrowhead, uh, I th and probably all of you know uh, that particular site, they are completely reliable. And they'll give you information uh, about the, what's on the street and uh, different reactions to it. Um, your main question is basically, what's what's our favorite compound? Yeah, um, I used to answer that one uh, honestly, and I'm not going to do it anymore because um, there's a particular one that has an effect on me. And no comments, please. Um, that's that's. Uh, Exquisitely um, exquisite. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, after I, I had mentioned that at, at a few conferences, uh, suddenly everybody was trying this, and uh, most of them were bored stiff. It did not have the same effect on anyone else that it did on me, which is fine. There's, that means there's more for me to use. But um, <laughs> everyone's chemistry is different. And so if, if you uh, say, this is my favorite, it doesn't mean anything for anybody else. So everyone has to choose their own ally. Well, I have to be a little careful on who I tell the structures and the identities of compounds to. I had a, uh, an occasion, was it about two, three, four years ago, with uh, 5 methoxy Dalt. A friend of mine on the East Coast was asking, what am I working on? I said 5 methoxy Dalt right now. I just finished it up. I'd written a two or three page thing for the third book on 5 methoxy dalt and what is it? So, so I sent him the three pages I had written, uh, synthesis, activity in man, biological activity, pharmacology, bio, the usual biochemistry thing. And he said, oh, that's kind of neat. And he put that thing in his website. And he said one week afterwards, he took it off the website because it was obviously being copied by a lot of people. Three weeks later, that's four weeks after I sent it to him, it had been synthesized in China and sent to this country by way of Holland. In, in four weeks, it was still not in the literature. It's yeah. never been published. Yeah. So the authorities have, don't know technically how to synthesize it, but it's all over the European field at, almost within, within four weeks. Yeah. So I'm a little hesitant about telling. I Now I just publish and let people have the published information. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? The gentleman in the white shirt. When Ann takes, uh, when Ann does therapy using psychedelics with clients, does she also take psychedelics to help them with their mishigas? It's a technical <laughs> term. Um, the last, um, last time I did uh, a psychedelic 
psychotherapy um, as a, a lay therapist was um, before we started writing PCAL, the first book. Uh, I soon discovered that you can't uh, do that and uh, do that kind of therapy and also write. Uh, it was impossible. Um, the, the material that um, a hypnotherapist friend of mine and I used was mostly MDMA, which is the most remarkable insight drug. Um, and it, it's a superb uh, tool for psychotherapy. Um, but I heard from a lot of the therapists at that time, this, this was in the 70s, a lot of them would take uh, the MDMA themselves with the patient. I did that twice and then realized that, first of all, I was wasting a, a good experience because you can't pay attention to your own insight when you're, you're paying attention to a patient's insights. Um, it was a waste of the compound and um, of everything else. And the reason for a therapist taking it was that um, they were not relying enough on their own natural uh, instincts and insight. They felt for a while they had to have the MDMA to sharpen their perceptions, and it's not true. Because um, any drug, including MDMA, is uh, the most it can do is open up what's inside you uh, already. And uh, I think all but about one that I know of uh, stopped taking any material with their patients. Uh, for one thing, it's a selfish thing to do. You cannot be a good therapist while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Questions? Um, sir. So the question, given the, um, the obvious vitality of, of Anne and Sasha, um, it raises the question of, 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 of body load and neurotoxicity, especially with MDMA, documented as, as being neurotoxic. And so um, have they correlated uh, the neurotoxicity of any of the novel substances um, that you've created with their neurotoxicity? And then in terms of your personal lives, how have you kept yourself so healthy uh, with yoga or exercise, or what is your regimen? Well, let me maybe start with this new one. Uh, as far as correlating uh, physiological, psychological uh, difficulties with MDMA, I know there's a lot of, of writing about this, but there's an immense amount of writing that does not indicate that. I think it's a few extraordinary bad trips or uh, physiological, psychological problems that get all the notoriety and all the press. So I don't think there is a, a believable correlation of <laughs> neurological problems with MDMA use. Personally, uh, I'm not a user of MDMA. I'm not a user of any regular drugs. I, my, my, my art is, is finding new ones. And if I kept stacking up on MDMA all the time, I wouldn't, I'd lose my, my, my function of my liver and, and my responses. So I, I am a little bit more conservative in regular, I'm not a regular drug user, except for a little red alcohol occasionally. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, well, Red wine. Okay. That's what carry one. When, uh, when uh, MDMA was pretty new on the scene, um, I found that its, its best use for me was in writing. Uh, all my parts of uh, Pical, the first book, uh, were written uh, under the influence of MDMA. Uh, 